Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation. We are team number 15 and we build a heat pump system for future students to use in lab experiments. My team members include myself, John Elwood, Eric Albon, Anthony Webb, Robert Knight, and Kyle Brogan. Our senior <coughs> project advisor is Dr. Hinyevich, our project coordinator is Professor Marcus, and our industry advisors include Mr. Dean Altimus and Mr. Sean Sullivan. I'll begin today with a brief background on heat pumps and how they work, and then I'll get into some project objectives. And then my team members will continue with project management, results, future work, and a brief conclusion. So heat naturally flows from high temperature to low temperature. For example, if you have an ice cube in your hand, that ice cube feels cold because the heat is leaving your hand going into the ice cube. The, pur the purpose of a heat pump is to reverse this and transfer heat from low to high temperature. Now, heat pumps can be built specifically for heating purposes, but with the addition of a reversing valve, they can be capable of heating and cooling. Our, our specific system was designed for heating water only. Now, the special thing about heat pumps is their efficiency. This efficiency is represented as something called coefficient of performance, also known as COP. It is basically the output over the input. In our case, it would be the heat going into the water over the electrical energy going into the system itself. Now, the COP is usually greater than one. However, this is not always the case due to some limitations of the efficiency. As some of you may know, heat pumps are not generally used in this area, and this is due to the climate. Our climate is somewhat colder than others, and the difference in temperature between the outside and inside air actually makes the efficiency suffer, and this is why heat pumps are generally used in more mild climates. Now that you know a little bit more about the background of heat pumps, I'd like to get in more about how they work. If you look at the screen, you will see at the top the four main components of a heat pump. There's a compressor, a condenser, an expansion valve, and an evaporator. The schematic diagram shown on the screen right now shows the basic workings of a heat pump. On the left-hand side, the evaporator, this shows where the refrigerant will be flowing through and it will be absorbing heat from the room itself. The refrigerant will then flow through the cycle over to the condenser where it will reject the heat into the water. Anthony will discuss our system in more detail later. Now, the main objective of our project was to design a safe and reliable system for future students to use in lab experiments. Along with this, we manufactured a, a condenser for use with our system. This condenser had to be built specifically to de deliver a desired amount of heat into the water. <coughs> After we built our system, we had to create a lab experiment for the students to use with our system. This lab experiment had to be educational yet simple, and the main purpose would be to find the COP while varying the water flow. I'll now turn it over to Eric to discuss our schedule and budget. All right, now if you take a look, look up on the screen, you can see our schedule. Um, once our team mobilized, we began our research. The first part of our research was to get the basics of a heat pump down. Uh, we also had to research the components in the system and how the system ran as a whole. Once the, uh, this was found out, we explored different heat exchanger designs because we were ourselves manufacturing the heat exchanger. Um, once the research was done, we were able to design three conceptual designs for the heat exchanger. Eventually, we came down to one final design that most effectively fit our system. And after the uh, return from school, we procured out, uh, the items for this and started manufacturing our heat pump system. Once this was completed, we were able to procure the rest of the heat pump system and assemble the entire system together. Uh, we need Ultimate Air to come in and help us with this, and some reps came in. Um, Robert's going to talk about that later. We had some complications and limitations in our lab. We weren't skilled enough to do some things. so. Um, they came in and finished it for us, but once this was done, we had to test and evaluate our heat pump, obviously. We ran the laboratory experiment that we created, and this gave us a benchmark result for everyone and future students to use in the lab. And obviously, after, for every project, you're going to need a budget. And now on the screen, you're going to see our budget. We are uh, allocated $2,000 for this project, and spent about $1,990, so we have the remaining $10. I don't know if it's cool by new, and really gonna want that back, but <laughs> they can use it if they want to. Um, but some of the main expenses in our system were our compressor, condenser, evaporator, expansion valve, um, temperature and pressure controls and gauges, and also hardware and miscellaneous um, 
materials that you use for the assembly. Um, lastly, we have the bi table that the seat pump system right now stands on and is in the lab. And now I'm going to pass to Anthony for our system schematic. All right, thank you, Eric. So, as Eric stated, we came up with three different conceptual designs. I would like to direct your attention to the left side of the screen. As you can see, this is a simplified final schematic of our actual system that we designed. And to the right, is that a, uh, to the right of that is a temperature entropy diagram, also known as a TS diagram in thermodynamics. The main point of this diagram that we, I want you to understand is that the red line pretty much tells the story of the refrigerant as it runs through our system, with the black curve representing the saturation line. Um, so as you change the entropy and the temperature of the refrigerant, it will change phases from either a vapor to a liquid or saturated liquid vapor if it actually lands on this line. So as you can see on the vertices of the, the, red, the red story of the refrigerant, there are four numbers, and these four numbers are placed accordingly in our system. So as far as our system, the, the refrigerant enters the compressor. This is between stages one and two. This is where the work is added to the system electrically. The refrigerant is then pressurized, thus increasing the temperature and changing the phase into a vapor. This vapor then, then enters the condenser where it rejects heat, in our case, to the counterflowing water. Once heat is rejected from the refrigerant, it changes phases to a liquid. This liquid then enters the expansion valve at stages, between stages three and four. This expansion valve then decreases the pressure, also decreasing the temperature and resulting in another phase change. The refrigerant then changes phases from a liquid to a saturated liquid vapor. The saturated liquid vapor then enters the evaporator, where the evaporator will take ambient air that is hotter and, and give, give heat to the refrigerant, thus completing the cycle and cha uh, changing the phase from a saturated liquid vapor into a vapor. Um, as you can see, our condenser, this is the second stage of our actual schematic. Uh, we had to have water running through so students can measure the temperature inlet and the outlet of the condenser. We had a counterflowing water flow to maximize the heat transfer, heat transfer rate of the, the fluids in the condenser me. And uh, it was actually a steady state flow, so it ran from the faucet to the condenser and then into the drain. And we also placed a flow meter in the inlet of the condenser to actually measure the flow and therefore properly calculate the heating load on the system. So after we designed our system, we had to determine what kind of refrigerant to place inside of it and charge it. Uh, we came up with six different candidates. Of these candidates, you can see from the red bar, we selected R22 based off of the following statistics. Um, the coefficient of performance of R22 was the highest of the six candidates. It also had a reasonable maximum pressure entering the condenser at two megapascals or approximately 2,000 kilopascals. Yet it had the second highest maximum temperature of 80 degrees Celsius <coughs> entering the condenser. Um, so after we decided our refrigerant, we purchased a one half horsepower compressor, and this was based off of our budget and our size constraints. From this, we wanted to we wanted to have a 10 to 15 degrees Celsius change of the water as it entered and exited the condenser. So with this, we determined our expected heating load to be approximately 4,000 BTUs per hour. From this, we performed simple heat exchanger analysis to determine the condenser characteristics. The characteristics are as followed: the length of the coil is 129 inches with a 3 8 of an inch diameter. And as you can see on the top right picture, there's a helical coil to accommodate the length. The housing diameter itself is 10 inches, and it has, the condenser has a length of 16 inches, which will allow it to house approximately 5.44 gallons of water. I'm going to hand it over to Robert, he's going to talk about the assembly of the system. OK, here you can see a flow chart. Um, the process we use with a similar system. Uh, where it starts in the top left corner, you can see two of our members uh, working on our condenser. Uh, this was actually the only part we were able to manufacture ourselves. Uh, the rest of the parts of the components of the uh, heat pump were a little bit out of our range to manufacture here in the labs. Uh, following it to the right of that, you can see the uh, first stages of the fabrication on our table, as well as our uh, condenser. And again, following that to the right, you can see our the completed uh, condenser, fully insulated, as well as uh, the piping uh, sealed within it. Uh, on the bottom right, you can see uh, our pressure and temperature controls being mounted to the uh, top of the table as well as some of the miscellaneous uh, valves and pipe fittings and stuff that uh, will be assembled in the system. To the left of that, as uh, Eric stated earlier, uh, in order to seal the system together, uh, the brazing techniques required very high heat. It was a bit out of our skill range to use. This is where we had ultimate air come in and assist us. Uh, th they're professional in the field and they can do this for us, uh, as well as assist us in the wiring of the controls. And then at the very end, at the le bottom left there, you can see our fully assembled and <coughs> functional system. So knowing that this system was going to be put into the ME labs for future students to use, uh, we wanted to design an experiment to go along, along with it. Uh, we wanted this experiment to uh, complement some of the uh, principles we learned about thermodynamics in our classes. 
Uh, so uh, the calculations, uh, we wanted the students to learn all the calculations leading up to and including the calculation to find COP, uh, as well as we wanted to, for them to find to see what the, our variable was, which was the flow rate of the water, and the effect that that had on temperature and pressures throughout the system. So once we had our heat, heat pump constructed and our, our, our experiment fully constructed, uh, we ran the experiment on the system. Uh, here you can see a few of our results. On the left, we have uh, the heating load compared to the COP. Uh, the heating load is uh, directly proportional to the, heat, uh, the water flow. So uh, you increase the heating load, or increase the water flow, you increase the heating load. So um, as you can see, the two share a linear relationship. Uh, thus, if we were to uh, increase the uh, water flow, uh, the COP would follow suit. Um, and also on the right here, you can see our maximum pressure. Uh, maximum pressure is the pressure of the refrigerant uh, going into the condenser. Uh, if you remember from earlier, our uh, goal was about two megapascals or two kilo or two thousand uh, kilopascals. You can see here on the chart. Um, our first our first point is the system heating up. Uh, we started at uh, 15 gallons per hour uh, and incrementally increased it up to about 35 gallons per hour. Uh, and once the system was fully heated up, its steady state uh, reached about about 50 kilopascals over our target goal of uh, two megapascals or two thousand kilopascals. So uh, this is how we knew our system was functioning as predicted. So now I'm going to hand it over to Kyle to talk a little bit about our future work. Although we manufactured a successful system, there are still a number of improvements that can be made to it. The first and most significant of these is the addition of a reversing valve, which will allow us to perform both heating and cooling experiments. In addition to this, the addition of a transient loop will allow us to perform heating analysis in the time domain. And in conjunction with both of these, computer data acquisition will allow us to record data electronically, which will make it easier to analyze. And all of these will allow us to perform a much wider, ride, a much wider variety of experiments. Another area that needs to be improved is the condenser that we manufacture. The current one we have is fairly large, and it's also not serviceable. So some improvements we would like to see there are to produce a smaller condenser, which is more, more compact, and one which is also serviceable. In conclusion, we successfully designed and manufactured a heat exchanger, which we incorporated into our heat pump system. We also created a laboratory experiment procedure for the system, which we completed ourselves in order to obtain benchmark results. We'd like to give a special thanks to Dr. Peter Hernievich, Dr. Zongping Wong, Mr. Richard Karkinog, Mr. Dean Altimus, and Mr. Sean Sullivan. I'd like to thank you for your time, and I'd now like to open the floor for questions. Uh, do we have any questions for the team? Uh, besides educational purpose, do you have any practical application of your design? Um, for our design, it was mainly for laboratory experiments, so it was educational purposes. So in your mind, what students will learn exactly? Um, what we want, to do, we want them to do is uh, vary the mass flow of the water and then see how the coefficient of performance of the system varies with that mass flow along with the, the, the system characteristics, the pressures throughout the system, the temperatures throughout the system. And from that gain understanding, with the addition of a transient loop, as uh, Kyle stated, they can run transient analysis. Um, with the addition of a reversing valve, they can do heating and cooling analysis. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot that can be added to the system due to the budget. We really couldn't add too much, but we, we, there's a lot of room for expansion, and we actually, with that, we actually could determine what we want to on our system. In what way the results will be monitored? Oh, well, at, at the moment, um, there are pressure gauges, there are four pressure gauges, two low uh, pressure and two high pressure. We have a uh, temperature control which has four temperatures throughout the system and plus the two, the inlet and the exit temperature of the water. And along with a watt meter which also reads, uh, it's actually an electrical watt meter, so it reads the watts, volts, and amps into the system. So from that, that's where they read. But we would like to add a data acquisition so it could be all monitored on a computer. Back to the practical applications. Um, if this system was incorporated into a mobile home perhaps, we could heat the water while cooling the middle of them at the same time. It was one potential application. Thank you. Uh, you said no. Did you get any values on the COP at all? Have you measured that? Have you completed this? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so there you go. Yeah. 
One thing that restricted us was our flow rate. The uh, flow meter that we have only goes up to about 35 gallons per hour. And as you can see, it restricts us. We actually calculated the maximum COP of about four, and we were restricted for around two and a half. So if we could increase our flow rate, then that would be great. We want to look into buying a new flow meter to account for this. Okay. Yeah, when you selected the, the refrigerator, did you consider which refrigerants were being phased out? Or having yes, we actually did take that into consideration. Uh, the reason we chose R22 was due to the coefficient of performance and the reasonable maximum pressure to run the system. Um, it was going to be a relatively small system, and due to the fact that it was a small system, we knew that R22 is not something you would put in a home or on a large-scale industrial heat pump. So we did take it into consideration, but that wasn't the driving factor of our selection of the refrigerator. If you had a reversing valve and used it as an air conditioner, would you get it the same kind of coefficient of performance? Um, to the best of our knowledge, correct. That, that, due to the fact that our budget wasn't really in the scope of our project to really look into it, because we really didn't have the money to even purchase it. But if, that, if we did have the money, we were going to run uh, cooling analysis as well as heating analysis to determine that. Time for one more. So, Brendan, uh, no. Um, did you guys think about using any additives in the water to um, kind of alter or maybe increase temperatures depending on what the use were would be? Um, no, we didn't. Due to the labs that we that we had to place in 133, so we pretty much had to just hook up to. And since it was a steady state analysis, we had to hook it up to the faucet. So, I mean, if we could, we could. That, that is something that could be looked into the future work. Thank you very much, guys.